Everyone, hi. Bruce Marks and LCSW coming at you with another video from Sunridge of Nevada. Tonight, we got a great lineup. I'm going to get right into it. The artist I'm going to do tonight is NLE Chopper. And he comes up to us from Memphis, Tennessee. Of course, you guys have recommended him, so we're going to do it. Um, the song is great, but what I want to do first is I want to give my explanation of the video that came along with it. And then I want to break down the lyrics that were the most poignant and important to me and relevant to me. So here we go. When you listen to the video, it's very, very interesting. First of all, it's in a comic book format, like a cartoon format, which I thought was an interesting take in general. But it's a very plaintive opening. When I say plaintive, it's like sorrowful. And it's like he's almost crying. Uh, he's exhausted. He's spent. He's worn out. There's a piano playing in the background, like a subtle piano, and it's bringing you into his mood of like melancholy, unhappy, like thinking, depression, which hence the name of the song, of course. Beat of the snare drum. I want to talk about that snare drum for a second, because when I do the second artist, uh, you'll understand where I'm coming from. The drum has been used in military parlance for, for centuries, to keep order, to keep a beat, to keep a cadence. Um, probably the most famous thing is seeing in the Civil War or Revolutionary War, like the drummer boy, you know, like dun, 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 and they would keep thousands of men in formation. And we still have variations of that today, but that snare drum, like dun, 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 and that snare drum is designed to keep you, like, focused, to keep you listening, to keep you self-aware. Um, it feels like he's giving you everything that he has in his body, uh, whatever he has left in him, every ounce of it. And you can almost feel he's ready to break down. If you notice the, the loop and the sequence, what do you get? You get chains. You get money. You get diamonds. You get the cars. You get the guns. Interesting to me was etched on the gun was the term la familia, which is the family, you know? and known for the Mexican street gang, La Familia, uh, the family. And I, th to me, when I, and I've said this before in other videos, nothing is done randomly in videos. I've learned that a long time ago. Nothing is done randomly in lyrics. It has a meaning behind it. And, you know, it's expressing something, you know, top shooter, what does that mean? And then you got the private helicopter, and you got the sequence where it plays itself out over and over like a continuous loop. And he realizes that this is all false. This is all empty. There's nothing to this. All the bling, all the wealth. What does it mean? Nothing. Okay. I notice with the car, the car is massive. It's omnipresent. It's like a physical beast almost. Where that car is there. But what do you get? You get the dark road. You get the taillights are on. Like it's stopped. He doesn't know where it's going. Nighttime, no lights. In a sense, it's a journey going nowhere. You got the red lights on, and like you think that he's sitting in the car with a driver, and the driver's like, Sir, where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? I I don't know. I I don't know. And it's dark. That darkness is enveloping him, which is a great mood for the song itself, because the video does a very good job of syncing up with the lyrics. But I really felt for that video of the car, that sequence of the car, he's probably sitting in the back. Where am I going? I don't know. There's no destination. There's no street lights. There's no signs up ahead. The twilight zone. And um, it was interesting to me, I could go anywhere. I don't really have a place to go to. And, you know, of course, we're past this. We've talked about this in our videos also. People think if you have all the toys in life, you're going to be happy. Uh, I can tell you from experience, not true. It doesn't work that way. And this is what depression does to you. It makes you feel empty and hollow, and you get no enjoyment out of anything in your life. Okay, so I wanted to bring up that aspect, and now I want to go into the lyrics. Okay. On the fur, and what I do, of course, again, is I've been asked this question actually a few times in, in comments. Why don't I do every line? We used to do that. We don't do that anymore. We just break down the lines that are most poignant to me clinically. Okay, so here we go. From the chorus, it goes, My eyes close, I don't want to see. 
my mind gone, I can't sleep. I ain't got no appetite, I can't even eat. It's kind of hard being me. And then, you know, he breaks that down again. And then on the verse, the first verse, he actually spells out the word depression. Here's the point. Everyone that's watching this right now, this is real depression. He's not making this up. And I said this before, the number one reason why people go to doctors around the world, around the world, is for depression. This is what it's all about. You don't want to see what's going on, and you don't want to deal with reality. That's a given. When he says that, my eyes are closed, I don't want to see. My mind gone, I can't sleep. But my eyes are closed, I don't want to see what's going on around me. I'm, I'm in a haze. And your sleep is ragged. You go to bed tired, you wake up tired. It's not a cliche. And when he says this, it's kind of hard being me. Yeah, it's really hard being him. I, I don't doubt that. And it's really hard being anybody because you literally don't know who you are and you feel like you're falling and there's no end in sight. That's what depression has been described to me from people. Like I'm falling and I'm just like falling and I don't know how when I'm going to land. That's what depression does to you. And he's so good at like by spelling it out, like letting you know the horrors of depression. This is what it is. This is what it does to you. Then he goes like this. I'm a real street guy, but I got depression. Okay. What he's saying is forget the outside look. The look, the look. Look at me. Look at me and realize that I'm hurting inside. One of the things I talk about clinically, how I work well with people, is I always put myself in the other person's position. I look at it through their eyes, not my own. So I'm talking to somebody that has a different background than me, different ethnicity, different sexual identity, different age. How are they seeing it? And when you do it like that, you look past the persona and you see what's inside, skin deep. Then he goes like this, um, just want to please anybody, I'm not perfect. Uh, I know from that one. I tried to do right and be your stepping stone, but you ain't do right, you even did me wrong. I don't know which world that I'm standing on. And it's a great four-line sequence because we want to try and make everybody happy in life. Everyone will be happy. Everyone should be happy. Everyone should enjoy themselves. There's a problem with that. What is the problem? You will never make everyone happy. One thing I've learned from doing these videos, and this tonight's going to be the 130th, this one, is you got to accept that people are going to be unhappy with what you did. You stink, you suck, you blow, this is a joke, you're a joke. You're not going to make everybody happy. If you get about like, oh, I, you know, the vast majority of the comments are very positive, we get that. But you're never going to make everyone happy in life, okay? And here's the thing too, you have to make yourself happy as well. You can't make other people happy at your expense. I find people with low self-esteem and low self-confidence, like they'll be the butt of the joke at the party. They'll run themselves ragged. They'll prepare everything. They won't ask for any kind of help. They'll spend their own money they don't have. Make everybody happy, make everybody happy. It doesn't work that way. It's not your job to make other people happy, that's on them. And so many times I've learned for myself, I can't do everything for everybody and cheer them up and make them happy and be the life of the party. You gotta have a little bit in the, in the tank as well. It's like if I, if I go to a function and I see that someone needs help, I don't have to like, you know, raise my hand, I help, I, I'm involved. I don't need the hostess or the guy who invited me over to do everything, I could think for myself. And if something needs a little bit of help, clean something up, take something out, talk to somebody, I can do it. But it's not your job in life to make everybody happy. They need to be happy themselves. And if they're not happy, they gotta figure that out. And it took me a long time to do that. Because I used to think I had to be the life of the party, dysfunctional family, dysfunctional childhood. You know, you make someone who's in your house dysfunctional, you want to be a pleasing person, a nice person. I wasted a lot of time doing that. Don't make that mistake. 
and he writes that really, really well and how he puts that together. Okay, now I want to give a little info on a line I really like that he said also here. He goes a little bit further down. I pop the Percocets. I don't blank with the Molly. Okay, there's always been this rumor with this thought that Molly and MDA go hand in hand. Wrong. That was a long time ago. That was your parents' MDMA. Not anymore. All right. Very little Molly even contains MDMA. There's other synthetics that they're using now, which are far more potent and far more powerful. Once it wears off, what can it lead to? Devastating depression. It's marketed to young people, 12 to 17, and first time users, and very toxic. And it's the fastest emerging drug problem in the U.S. is the synthetic drug market. Uh, what's the granddaddy of them all? Methamphetamine. But everything that kind of springs around that is all synthetics. Okay? You also can show signs of depression from this and problems getting out of bed. So if your depression is bad to begin with, you're making it worse by taking anything to do that's going to be M Molly derivative. Don't touch that stuff. It's bad, 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 bad. Okay. Then he goes like this. He goes a little further on in verse two. He goes, and I've been just thinking about the best times of my life, the best times of my life, best times of my life. Think about the, think about it, the best times of my life, the best times of my life. I just want to go and see the light. It's a great sequence because of the rhythm of the lyrics and the repetition of the lyrics. I am thinking about the best times of my life over and over again because I can't even remember what those best times were. You know, he knows how he's saying this. What are the best times? The best times. What are the best times? What are the best times? When your mind is cloudy, you can't even conceive of what was the best time. And what he's saying is, I need help. I need to get closer to the light for some clarity. When you repeat yourself like that, when you're saying, what are the best times? What was the best time? My best time. Tell me, tell me, tell me. I need to get to the light. It's a metaphor for clarity, for awakening, for seeing things in the truth. You don't see things in the dark. You notice in the video that car, that muscle car, is sitting idling in the dark. There's no light in that video. It's a very dark video. And even with the cross at one point at the end of the at the end of the video, it turns red, symbolic of blood. Like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm stuck in neutral. Where do I go? I don't know. What was a good time? What was a good time? What would I have a good time? Did you have a good time with me? Did I like a good time with you? Did you like spending time with me? Was it? That loop, that loop, that loop, that loop. And in the end, kind of hard being me is the last line from the chorus. The piano just fades out. He gave and he gave and he gave. The snare drum stops. And the piano tinkles off. It's done. I'm finished. I'm spent. I got nothing in the tank. Okay. What I want to say about this in closing, the song is great. It's a great song. And credit for him for saying that he struggles with depression. And he's clearly not afraid to talk about it in his music. He also does meditation, okay, in order to deal with mental health issues that he has. And the pressure of being a young entertainer. I'm impressed that he has the composure and self-confidence to think and act the way that he does. And at such a young age, I'm, I'm always amazed at these young musicians. When I was his age, 18, I was no, <laughs> wow. If I could walk a, walk a straight line and have a complete sense and not acting like an idiot, I would have been a good day for me. This guy's putting out music like this on this level, this complexity. I applaud him. It shows that he's grounded and that he's self-confident. Okay, when you're self-confident, you do these things in a normal, productive way. Why am I saying this? This is what we want for you, our audience. This is exactly why it's such a great song for me. Young guy. The majority of our people that comment and watch these videos are young. Okay? Take chances and don't worry about being too young because time to make learning mistakes is when you're young. That's how you grow. You don't learn until you make mistakes.
but keep your family close. Mom's his manager. Okay, smart already. Keeps him in the family. Stay grounded. Stay humble. Stay focused and make the world yours. Okay. I'm not just in awe of his musical abilities, which are very, very prodigious and, and impressive in itself. He writes lyrics that are some of it just beautiful. You would think that he's much older than he actually is. That's what I first initially thought because I read his bio on Wikipedia. But this is how you get great. You got to put yourself up against the best people out there, whether it's in sports, music, arts, financial, anything. You got to put yourself out there. That's how you become the best. That's how you see where you don't know what you know and how you grow. And that's what we want for you guys. Never fail to grow. Fail in a controlled way, in an appropriate way, not in a self-destructive way, but never fail to grow. That's it, guys. Great song, great lyrics. Blown away by the youngster. He's an impressive young man. Wish him only huge success. And another video coming to you from Sunridge of Nevada. Thanks.